quantum numbers and atomic orbitals. Okay, so now let's get a little bit more in depth about electron wave functions and start including quantum numbers. Now, wave functions, these electron wave functions that we talked about that we call orbitals, these use three quantum numbers to specify a particular wave function for an electron. So in other words, that you, they use three quantum numbers to specify a particular orbital. So n is called the principal quantum number. L is called either the azimuthal or sometimes angular momentum quantum number. And m sub l, so this is an m subscript l, that's called the magnetic quantum number. Now it takes a set of three quantum numbers to describe a particular orbital. Okay, So for instance, if I make a set 2, so n equals 2, l equals 1, and m sub l is equal to 0, that gives me one of the three p orbitals. Now I will go through, obviously, how to do that, how I figured that out. But that is a 2p orbital. And two electrons can actually occupy this orbital. In fact, two electrons can occupy any orbital. Now, in order to fully describe an electron in an atom, we need a set of four quantum numbers that are unique to it. OK? So one of the electrons in a 2p orbital, OK? So again, n would be 2, l would be 1, m sub l could be negative 1, 0, or 1, although I chose 0 in the previous example and down here. And m sub s can be either plus 1 half or minus 1 half. So this set of four quantum numbers describes one of the electrons in one of the 2p orbitals. Now one analogy for the set of four quantum numbers is like an address for an electron in an atom. Okay. Now obviously the analogy isn't perfect since we don't know exactly where the electron is, we don't know, where it, it, we don't know its path, but it, it, it works pretty well because basically one electron gets one address and no other electron can have the same exact address as that electron. Okay, so let's go through the quantum numbers one by one. So the first one is called the principal quantum number. And this is n, okay? Now the allowed values, so n is allowed to be 1, 2, 3, and then going up, okay? n cannot be 0, and it just goes up with integer values, okay? Now n describes the electron shell, all right? So n equals 1 is a principal shell n equals 2 is a principal shell, n equals 3 is a principal shell, and so on. Now this gives the energy of the atom generally, okay, especially it actually gives the energy for a one electron atom or ion, but it generally gives the energy of the atom, okay, and it also determines the size of the orbital, okay. So the larger the n, the larger the orbital. The next one is the azimuthal or angular momentum quantum number. And this quantum number depends on what n is. Okay, so what L can be depends directly on what n is. So L, L can be 0, 1, 2, see it goes up by integer values, but it can only go up to n minus 1. Okay, so it's not allowed to go any higher than whatever n is, minus 1. And these L values determine the overall shape of the orbital. Okay, And so we can either describe the shape of an orbital using the L value, you know, so the number, or we can use the names that they have. Okay, So for instance, L equals 0, that's an S orbital. Okay, And so that means the exact same thing. If L is equal to 0, 
then it's an s orbital. All right, same thing with L equals one. Okay, anytime L is equal to one, then it's a P orbital. All right, so again, they mean the same thing. There's the quantum number, which is zero, and then the name of it, which is an S orbital. So the quantum number is one, the name is a P orbital. If L is equal to two, then that's a d orbital, okay? So it means the same thing. L equals two means a d orbital. And L equals three means an f orbital. Every single time, okay? Now the magnetic quantum number, this is m sub l, okay? And the reason why it's called m sub l is because it depends on what l is, okay? So remember, l depended on what n is, now m sub l depends on what l is. And so m sub l can be anything from negative l, okay, and then negative l plus one, so whatever l is, you know, negative l and then plus one, negative l plus two, okay, and then it keeps on going up from there until it gets to l minus one and then up to l. Okay, so we'll do an example in a few minutes. You can see how that works. And the number of m sub l values gives the number of orbitals in a subshell, or the number of orbitals in a set of orbitals, okay? So that's two ways to say the same thing. So the number of m sub l values gives the number of orbitals in a subshell, or the number of orbitals in a set of orbitals. Okay, so here is an example. So now, for s orbitals. So earlier I said s orbital means l equals zero. Okay, that's still true. Okay, now m sub l, what can m sub l be? Well, it can only be negative l, zero, and positive l. So negative l to positive l, and since l is zero, then it can be negative zero, zero, and positive zero, which of course is just plain old zero. So that's why there's only one s orbital in a subshell, in the s subshell, because there's only one value for m sub l that is allowed, okay? Now p orbitals, earlier we said that there are three p orbitals for every n level above, equal to or above two, okay? so. L equals one, that means a p orbital, means the same thing, okay? And the allowed values are anywhere from negative L to positive L, increasing by one, okay? So that gives minus one, okay? So that's minus L, increase it by one, that's zero, and then up to positive L, which is one, okay? And when we count these m sub L values, we see that there are three of them. And that's how we get three p orbitals in a set, or three p orbitals in a subshell, okay? So another example, L equals two. Remember, that is the same thing as a d orbital. Those mean the same thing, all right? And we can go from negative L to positive L, increasing by one, okay? So one of the values allowed is negative two. The next one, negative one. So increasing by one, another increased by one, zero, another one increased by one, one, and then finally up to positive L. And when we count these, one, two, three, four, five, then we get five d orbitals in a set of d orbitals, or five d orbitals in the subshell. And it all has to do with the number of values for m sub L. Now, the magnetic quantum number, this m sub l, also determines the orientation of the orbital in space. So for instance, there are three values of m sub l for l equals one, which is a p orbital, so remember that. And there are, so that means there are three orientations for p orbitals, okay? So let's go to the next slide and let's see what those are, all right? And so here's one of the p orbitals oriented along the x-axis, okay? 
and this is another name for it, so it tells us which axis it is following. Okay, so 2px, all right. Here's another one oriented along the y-axis, okay. And that's 2py, and then the last one is oriented along the z-axis. So there are three orientations, three orbitals in the subshell, in the p subshell, and they're orbital, they are oriented in three different directions, okay, and there are three values of m sub l, all right? So all this goes together. Okay, now the spin quantum number actually is not dependent on any other quantum number, and it's only allowed to have two values. One of them is plus one half, and the other one is minus one half. And basically, electrons with different m sub s values, those behave differently in a magnetic field, okay? So the spin quantum number is called m sub s, okay? And the allowed values are plus one half and minus one half, and that's it, and it doesn't depend on any other quantum number, okay? So this spin quantum number, m sub s, it dictates that only two electrons are in a given orbital, okay? So one of them has spin up, and the other one has spin down, okay? So I will post other examples showing how you can specify quantum numbers for a certain orbital, and then there are just two ways to make a unique set of four quantum numbers for the electrons in that orbital, okay? So one of them is spin up, and one of them is spin down. Okay, so here's a few little examples, and again, I'll post more, okay? If the principal quantum number n is equal to 2, what are the allowed values for L, okay? And we also want to identify the types of orbitals or subshells that exist for n equals 2. All right, so now remember our rule. So L is equal to 0, 1, 2, basically up to n minus 1. So if n is equal to 2, then n minus 1 is 1, okay? So for n equals 2, then L can be either 0 or 1, all right? But it can't be 2 because that would be equal to n, all right? So it can either have 0 or 1 as a value, okay? And then we remember that when we say L equals 0, that means an s orbital. And when we say L equals 1, that means a p orbital, okay? So the n equals 2 shell has two different types of orbitals, or two different types, or two different subshells, okay? So the s orbital, L equals 0, and the p orbitals, which is L equals 1. Okay, now here's another one. So if the, if the azimuthal quantum number is equal to 3, what are the allowed values for m sub l, okay? And we want to identify the orbital type for l equals 3. And we also want to figure out how many orbitals are in that l equals 3 subshell. Okay, so if l is equal to 3, then remembering our rule, the, so we know we can have negative 3, we know we can have positive 3, and then basically from negative 3 we just increase by 1 all the way until we reach positive 3, okay? So I, this is my shorthand, so negative L to positive L, okay? And so M sub L can be minus 3, so that's L, negative, negative L, okay? Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and then we get to the value of L again, so that's 3, okay? And so L equals 3, we're going to remember that's an F orbital, all right? So L equals 3 means an F orbital. So the only thing we have left to decide is how many F orbitals there are in a set. So if we count these M sub L values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then we find out that the set of F orbitals, or the F subshell, has seven orbitals in it, okay? So just a reminder, the number of allowed values for m sub l is equal to the number of orbitals in a subshell, 
Okay. Okay, so I will post, oh, actually I by now, if you're watching this, I probably have posted additional quantum number example problems, okay? So lots of different kinds of examples, going through the different possibilities for questions that could be asked on this topic.